Hi everybody and welcome to the next part of the investigation of the Hornby Talisman train set produced in about 1960 along to my friend who bought it in the early 60s um, and I've just been checking it out in mine idle for many years in a loft or a garage been attacked by age, dampness and mice, but not necessarily in that order. Anyway, let's have a look at the locomotive. It still has its original instruction uh, leaflet. Apart from being folded, it looks in pretty good condition. No dampness tears are in it. So here's the A4 Golden Fleece. And with it comes the talisman head coat. And I believe that there's a little slot in front of the locomotive, just there above the headboard where it sits. I'll show that later on. Put it in there for the time being and keep it safe. Tender, of course, it's non powered. All the power is done through the locomotive. I suspect that this might be a vertical double O motor with the pushing springs, uh, but I'm only suggesting it might be. I don't know yet. Looking at it, it looks in very good condition. I can't see any problems with it, hardly even any scratches, it has been worn, wheels are even cleaned, front bogey is good, rear bogey is good, handrail looks okay, maybe slightly tarnished after all this time, slight marking in the double chimney there, maybe cover that with some paint. And the whistle at the front and the number 60030 and the nameplate on the other side to go in place. Right, I think we should try and get it opened up and make sure it's working. I'm not going to apply power at this stage. I think I'd rather check that the mechanism is working okay. I'm going to start by removing the front and rear pony trucks. I should have pointed out this is very heavy. And now that I've got that far, I can't see any other screw there. Is that a nut? Looks like a nut there, so I'll try and find the correct nut driver. Imagine this is probably going to be a BA size, but I've got a 5mm spinner, and that seems to be working. And that's it off. And will that release the body? Looks like it. Hinges up, hinges at the back, and here it comes out. And I was right, it is the Hornby double, double O vertical mount motor. Let me just remove this out of the way. So the magnet might be needing a bit of attention. Mm. Not too bad, not too bad there. Power connection. Difficult to access. Commutator and the armature. 
Okay, so that moves reasonably well. I'm looking at the commutator, it's kind of reasonably shiny. There's just bits of marking on it. I wonder if someone's tried to clean it already. Maybe not, maybe it hasn't been used very much. But that doesn't look too bad. Uh, so I need to disengage it to check the mechanism. I want to remove the brushes and examine them. These are push-in plugs, so they should pull out and hopefully that will release the spring. I didn't see the spring come out. Is that it in there? Let me just check. Move the spring. I mean, it's very shiny. Almost brand new. Will the brush come out? No, nope, I can get that later on. Move this one. Again, here's the spring. And the brush. Will come out later on. Let's get the magnet out. It's held in by this huge screw and this nut, which is a size 6. There we go. And that allows the screw to come through. Now, if my understanding is correct, when I remove this and this, I think I have to remove the magnet and the pole pieces almost simultaneously. It sort of helps to reduce the drain of the magnetic field or something of that ilk. Either way, I'm going to keep it together and the nut just in there. Keep that separate from the rest of the components and that allows the mechanism the motor to turn and you can see the mechanism is running quite freely so far. Yeah, so maybe a good clean and lubrication. As I go to loosen this a nut at the top, which is really the upper bearing for the armature. I notice it's actually very slack and if I pick it up there's a locking nut just underneath the shell there and it doesn't seem to be locked so it's obviously worked loose some time. So I'm just going to try and be careful with this. Take out, then now it's locking with the nut. So I'm going to have to undo the nut, so I need to find a suitable size key. So I've undone done the threaded screw, there we go, push, and the nut has just slid, slid, slid down and the armature is kind of free. Nearly. And if I remember working on a Duchess of Athol many years ago and there's a ball bearing within this nut I believe. So I want to make sure that nothing like that escapes. Looks like a ball bearing in there. There's the nut. And there's the armature. Commutator plates look relatively clean but undamaged. Still some grime there but that could easily clean it off. 
and uh, I'll check the windings very soon. Now that I can do that, I should be able to check the mechanism. And that runs very, very smoothly. So, could be clean up, bit of lubrication at relevant points, and that should be ready to go. Tarnishment there. Yeah. So let's leave that aside. Uh, oh, just before I do, yeah, down in the bottom bearing, I can make out another ball bearing. So again, I don't want to lose that. Oh, and I'll get there yet. The other thing which I remembered to do is to try and remove the brushes. I think they may have to be pushed on the outside in. Yep, one and for the second one. I don't know what length they ought to be, but I'll see if I can get new ones. Anyway, let's leave those aside, let's see the mechanism aside, and let's have a look at this baby. Got some tea cut, cotton buds, fibre pen, some kitchen towels. I'm going to try and clean this up best I can. The commutator plates cleaned, uh, I cleaned the threaded spindle and now I'm going to check continuity across the plates of the commutator. This of course is simply a static test to check for resistance as opposed to inductance or any other of the features of a coil. So I'm trying to find a place where the plates are, are convenient. This way I can take these two plates. Yep, I'm reading 9.6 on my multimeter. Turn it around, oops. This is what happened. Try again. Oops. 9.5 Oops. 9.5 And 9.6 so that's all three coils and they're all well within tolerance of each other. I feel pretty happy that that is a working commutator and armature. Turning now to the drive mechanism, I'm looking first of all to see if there are any bent corn rods and they all look reasonably straight, reasonably spaced and it does run so I'll just quickly run a brush over everything and I'm just going to lubricate the uh, axles, the gear and that should be it and of course the, uh, the piston drive yeah so
I'm going to use this to give the magnet a little bit of a charge. So you probably know how this works. There's a north pole and a south pole and the magnet has to fit it in that orientation. I've already checked with my compass and the right hand pole is the north and the left hand is the south. So got it plugged in, give this a little blast. And take this out just very safely. And that's a lot stronger than it was before. Good. So let me just put this magnetizer away. We're getting close, people. So uh, I cleaned and lubricated the wheels, the corn rods. Uh, silly me, I forgot to press the record. I hope you don't mind, but don't do it all again. It's all been done. I have the wheel and everything. The only thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of petroleum jelly onto the teeth of the idler wheel and that hopefully will work its way into the mechanism. So I'm going to fit the armature and just a little bit of grease on the tip of the armature because that's going to sink into a little pot the bottom of the chamber where the ball bearing resides and that should just fit in there yep and then there's another ball bearing in the top bearing which I took out earlier which is this one so this bearing has to be held in with a nut on the underside, so I'm going to have to negotiate that. I hope you don't mind. I don't make it fool myself on camera. I'll fit it in off camera and be back soon. Despite what I said a few minutes ago, I think I worked out how to do it, so I'm going to do it on camera. First of all, I'm going to take the nut and slide it over the top of the armature spindle then manoeuvre the spindle into the housing so that the rear, the bottom spindle, fits into the bearing pot and the screw engages with the idler wheel and that's a bit that's a bit from the nickety and this nut comes off put that in there that should drop down engage with the idler wheel the wheels are turning so that's okay. Then I take the grub screw, I'm just going to fill the pot with some grease, feed that into the top of the housing. I used a screwdriver the last time, so I'll use a screwdriver again. That feeds in there. And then I just present it to the top of the spindle, mainly by feel, but that feels good. Quick visual check, yes, that's now in place. And the armature runs and the wheels are rotating. Now I can start to tighten that nut. So I'm going to turn it upside down to help let gravity help and just twist the nut and it almost falls onto the top of the thread of the grub. Like so. And then I can adjust this for optimum travel or minimum travel but optimum freedom of movement. That looks very promising doesn't it? So time to fit the brushes and see if it worked electrically.
I don't have new brushes. So when I put these, one end of the brush has shown a curve where it's rubbed against the commutator. So I'm going to put in with the flat edge towards the commutator. Which makes it almost like a new brush. The spring gives the tension and then the plug. I'll simply push it in and hold it there. These are simply friction fit and that goes in there. Take the second brush. Again I'm looking for the flat edge into the tube and the spring which I mentioned before looks in very good condition. And then this plug here again is friction fit. And that's the brushes fitted. Now, it won't actually work yet because I need the magnet. Magnet and pole pieces assembly, uh, I've kept them together. Uh, on the pole pieces at the end you just see the letter L and, and I turn it over put the letter oops, sorry, my fingers covering it R and that relates to the side of the locomotive pointing forward. So the right hand pole goes here, the left hand pole goes there. And also this head of the bolt was on this side and the nut was on this side. So I'm going to try and slide this assembly over the armature and into position without removing them, if I can, but it actually looks as if this brush pin is getting in the road, so take that out, fit it in, locate those there and then put the brush holder back in again. There we go. So. Let me line this up, that in there, there we go, into there. Tighten it and I'm going to set a spanner. Give it a little bit of tension. Okay, I can tighten that up later on. And it means I think I've now reached the stage where I can first apply power to this. Right. So, working the assumption that the chassis is the neutral return, normally, I'm fitting the negative power onto that plug and the positive uh, power onto this uh, suppression coil and let's give it a little bit of voltage and with hardly anything there maybe three volts just working away and in all honesty that is going in the reverse direction to what I was expecting or it may be my power supply I'm upside down. However, running nicely. And in the opposite direction. Again, about 3 volts in that direction. You don't see anything, you don't smell anything. Wow! I used to think I'd like to run that fast when I'm 65. I couldn't run that fast when I was 35. What am I talking about? Anyway! Wow! 
so it looks as if my friend still got a working golden fleece. So the next thing to do, get it set up, run it and test. Yeah, that's what I need to do. I can sit and watch this for hours, but I don't think you could. Okay, see you soon. Just now that I've got the ponies, ponies on, I'm going to test it from the wheels with my power application probe. So let's get some voltage in there. And uh, oh, it did work. Yeah, there we go. No, but it's not. It's working from these wheels. Yeah. But uh, these wheels here. Okay. I think I can see the problem. Just in here. The other spring contact that's sticking up, whereas this one is actually behind the wheel. Oh dear, better get that checked out. So I've removed the base, the base plate and there's the other contact spring and it seems to be sticking up in the air rather than sitting behind the wheel flange. That was pretty mucky. I forgot all about this end of it. So I think this will have to be realigned. Okay, leave it with me. On the base here, there is a groove for the wire contact. The side here is okay. It sits neatly in there and it's fed behind this drive wheel, just in there. When I look at the other end, the groove comes down and goes along to the front of this wheel. But this doesn't reach. And because it's been bent, I'm thinking that perhaps this is broken. And someone has twisted this to try and make contact with this rim. So I'm going to check up and see if there's a replacement spring if it looks just as I've described. And if it is, I'll get it ordered up and get it fitted. And that should allow contact with both sets of the wheels. Meantime, I will affect an repair, I hope, by bending this to touch the inside of the wheel. But that will be a temporary solution. Uh, yeah, so it is working, but I think I'd like to get it a bit more uh, certain. Okay, so the next stage, get it on a piece of track and see if it will actually run. I just finished running this for a little while on rolling road, uh, and now I've got it on a bit of track, so this is the moment of truth. In one direction, coming back in the other. There we go. Very good. I think, whoops, I said that. I think that they're replacing that pickup. Whoops. Having said that, yeah. There we go. Come on. That might be my track piece actually. It's quite weird. So, that looks pretty promising. But I'll still order up that pickup and uh, that should help in the long term. So, I think my friend's got a working golden place. So, uh, I'm going to finish this part here um, and decide where I'm going next because actually, try that again. I'm going to finish this part here because it's almost supper time and I have to go and prepare a meal. So I'll be picking this up in a few days time. For you it might only be a few seconds. But until I do see you again, 
Take care, everybody, and it's bye for now.